so he's obviously had a lot. It would have been, you know, a, one of those seasons anyway with you recording it because <laughs> it's, it, it is difficult, isn't it? But uh, as well as all of those challenges of the points deductions mm. and the squad being thin, this takeover stuff has been going on since September. We first heard about it. You made a great point before about when he took over, there was a protest against the board because mm. we won't go back over all of yeah, that we stuff. we all know. <laughs> Fans, you know, were highlighting this. Anyway, but that was that was February 2023. Mm -hmm. We got to the summer, there was a lot of stuff ongoing. You know, remember Farad Mashiri in January 23 doing this public address that we'll get a striker and I'm getting investments and, and you know, we've had the niche bar backs and they'll tell us they were so close to signing this investment deal. Don't know where that is. But then there's MSP stuff and all of that and Triple Seven, then they MSP fell away because of a certain thing and Triple Seven took it on. And we're here in May at the time of recording. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. happened and obviously we'll come on to this in, in further detail in a minute. But Having all that on top of it as well, I mean, that would have been, that would have been, you know, gold in a way of recording it all. But then again, I, I imagine the way the club is, it's probably, People are probably just as much in the dark in there as what anybody else. I think but, so, because you've got to remember there's no proper board mm -hmm, right now. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of is a concern for me because... You know, the club's just having to tick along. Yeah. And that's not, you know, a long term plan. I don't think anyone, I don't think Colin Chong thought when he'd take interim CEO, he'd still be in that seat right now as we're talking today. You know, and for the manager as well, he's got to face all these questions mm. week in, week out. And, and, you know, I'm a Daesh fan, so, you know, I know he says he's Marmite, and I think he accepts that. So I understand some people aren't his biggest fan. But I think the fact that he has to face these questions, and it's nothing to do with him. Chances are, when he says he doesn't really know, he probably doesn't really know. He's not lying. He doesn't mm. fully know what's going Can on. Can I ask you as a journalist then? Because obviously, me, this is something that me and Ped have said many a time. It's that it's unfair that he has to front mm. this. Or he's the only one, really. Yeah, he's the, he's the he's, only leader he's the that only Everton's fit. got right Exactly. Now. But as a journalist, who, who do you think could have fronted this up a little bit? And I am interested in this because we sometimes, certainly us doing this, we want probably... We might want a bit too much from the mm. club in terms of someone to 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 face these kind of questions. Yeah. But I, I do feel that John Blaine always bangs on about a chief engagement officer with someone who deals with the media. And I, I do quite like the thought of that. It's very American, that, isn't it? It is. But And I get that. Who would speak, though, Julie? Because I think in these moments, I think all the team... Yeah. Absolutely, it's got to be the manager, I think. I do have an issue that Kevin Thelwell doesn't speak, and I know you've you've interviewed him. And he came across fantastically yeah, well. Yeah, he does, and I wish he so would. So I don't yeah. understand why. Maybe I should go back in and speak to him. I think you. so, because <laughs> yeah, because I don't I don't think the club do it to be fair, or Kevin doesn't <laughs> want to do it. But that is a bit. I will admit that to me, that's a bugbear mm. of mine because I think he should be able to regularly update. He doesn't have to go. Here's my list of players who we want. He doesn't have to yeah, do that. Yeah, I, I think business but, deals and player mm. deals. I appreciate everybody wants to know the ins and outs and all the details. Mm, you, you can't because, you know, you don't see Marks and Spencer going on the telly mm. and talking about their business deals. No, that, that's just not going to happen. But I agree with you. I think, but I think right now, given the situation, given, you know, every, everything's interim, anyone that is there is interim. Mm. I think it's unfair on Sean Dyche to keep being asked these questions. Mm. I think it has to be the owner. For me, the owner yeah. needs to come forward and explain whether that's through the media, if there's a press conference held, or if he does it via the club. Mm. I think now he's the only one that's got any power in the situation that Everton's in. I don't think people day to day in the club have got the power to push this takeover deal through, because I think it will be done by now. Mm. It's the owner that's holding all the cards. So I think Fahad Mashiri now needs to come out and speak and explain exactly what the situation is, mm. where it is today, where he expects it to be next week yeah. and where he expects it to be for the summer transfer window mm. and next season. There needs to be a 12-month plan, fairly public now. Mm. Is he going to still be the owner when we kick off the new season? Will he still be there for the final season at Goodison? Because, again, it's unfair to Goodison Park that this is overshadowing what should be a celebration of a, of a great, I was going to say, English iconic stadium. It's a worldwide iconic stadium. You know, yeah, you absolutely. see glimpses of it and everyone instantly knows that's Goodison Park. And that is not how it should be going out with this going on. 
it should be celebrated you know there should be some wins at the, at the at the stadium and that's how it goes out so for me it's the owner the owner now is the one that's got the power to end this situation mm. and also speak out we'll come back to that in a sec so with all that dealing and the juggling and all that everton did go on a period of four months without a victory mm. from burnley away to Burnley at home and, and they get the win. <laughs> Burnley bookends. The Burnley bookends, yeah. And obviously, listen, I've, I've said it before, I think, I think the manager's lucky in a way mm. that the club was so dysfunctional, if you want to call it that. I think he'd have been sacked by then. Yeah. I think any Everton It's an manager, unusual situation. I don't it? think yeah. any Everton manager, and I, I don't mind, even if Sean Dyke has sat here, I would say, in a different situation. He, and he wouldn't mind yeah. that, yeah. Right, no issue with it, because I think... I like I'm Frank. speaking on his behalf. No, no, no I'm no, sure no. he wouldn't mind. What I'm saying is, I like I like Frank Lampard, but he had to go. We yeah. couldn't win a game. Rafa Benitez, I didn't like, but he had to go. And, and I think Sean Dyche would have done. He, but... he has lovely things to say about you. Oh, he loves me, <laughs> Rafa. Absolutely can't wait. Um, but I think what he what he did really well, the manager was he was able to regalvanise it. And obviously, Everton have won four in the last mm. six, which is fantastic. You know. I went away, my dream was come back and us be all right. Yeah. Wasn't banking on a derby win, I'll be honest, <laughs> but I thought if we could beat Forest and yeah. Brentford and not lose at Luton, we'd be safe and, and we had the, the lovely derby win in between. So he's done brilliantly there and the players who I have battered for this season when people told me they were awful, they're better than the show, have come through mm. as well. I think that's really good. And it is nice, isn't it? And I think the manager said that actually after the Luton game, it's like... Don't care what's going on at the bottom. No. But you Nothing know, to do with but, us now. but I like that. I like yeah, that yeah. as well. That you know, he's asked, "Who would you like to see stay up oh, or go nonsense. down?" I don't care. Yeah. Because like he said, nobody cared that Everton no. was in this situation. Nobody but isn't it cared. lovely that we don't have to? I it said to Ped coming in, "I'm not thinking." Oh my no, God, you're not doing weekend. the maths, and not having to look at other no, games because no. it isn't just match day for Everton. It's consuming, especially last season. You remember, I always remember, you know, watching what Leicester were doing, thinking, no. "Don't want to be watching this." No. You know, and so it's kind of nice, as you say, just walk the dog and feel ten times lighter <laughs> and not have to worry about it. But, yeah, I mean, it was unusual for a manager probably to go on that winless streak. Mm. For me, I just don't think you can separate the two issues, everything that was going on. It's just all together. Right? I, I just don't think you can. I know a lot of people were saying they've got to get over it. Well, I don't think, as fans, anybody got over what mm. was going on. So if you imagine as well, you know, and for me, it's been three years of this. I don't see it as... It feels like one season. It feels like it? it's just been a continuous mm. swirl mm. of all this. And this sort of feels, I don't know, I keep describing it as the eye in the storm because I think there's a little bit more coming. If you want to watch the rest of this video, then make sure you join Toffee TV Premier when you can get access to all our exclusive shows, including live daily videos. Click the QR code on the screen here.